Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Appreciate you joining me for this short devotional on the Sunday evening. I uh, hope you've had a good Lord's Day and that you're able to be together with maybe some family or friends or family and friends this evening. And I'm so glad that you've taken the just a time to be with me for a few minutes. I'd like to share with you a few practical reflections that flow out of what we talked about in worship this morning, a story about Mary and Martha from Luke 10 and the last five verses of that chapter. So sort of some things like, how do you do this on a practical level, you know? We'll share a few thoughts about that in a minute. But uh, after that, we'll uh, pray together. We'll have some songs. And I, I do hope this is a time of encouragement for you, that you'll use it as a springboard to promote uh, fellowship and friendship within our congregation, and that will encourage you in your walk with Jesus Christ uh, to have more of an intimate, uh, close-knit fellowship with the one who created you and the one who loves you and that it'll build up our congregation through building up you as an individual and you and families and you and uh, together with other families in our in our church family. Um, so the story this morning was from Luke 10, 38 through 42, where Jesus went to Mary and Martha's house, presumably to eat a meal. And Martha's in the kitchen serving. Mary's at the feet of Jesus, uh, just listening to him teach. And uh, Martha's getting aggravated. So if you were at worship this morning or join us online, you, you may remember I shared some just the reflections on how I think Jesus' teaching here is in crucial and just uh, incredibly important for us at this particular moment. I, I know that's always been the case, uh, but there are some, some, some reasons, culturally speaking, with the invention of various forms of technology that make this a pressing thing. Uh, Jesus in the text, and this, you know, the, the money line is when he says that Martha, or he says to Martha, that Jesus, that Mary has found the one thing, you know, the, that one thing is necessary. And when Jesus says that, we ought to listen up. So how do you go about doing that, you know, on a practical level? Uh, some of you watching this are at a different stage of life than I'm at, for example. You, you may be a, a stay-at-home mom. You may be, uh, maybe you're not a stay-at-home mom uh, or stay-at-home parent or stay-at-home dad, but you do have uh, a child kids, multiple kids, and they're busy, uh, what's going on this time of year, right? baseball, soccer, you know, all, all sorts of stuff, whatever's going on, music, band, theater, dance, just various things that people participate in. And so you're like, okay, it's easy for you to do this, you know, it's not so easy for me to do it. And that may be, may be true that it's more difficult at different stages in life. I think it probably is the case. But let me ask you to think about something, all right? Just, you know, just think about it, just pray about it. What if finding time every day was the most important thing you could do to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is what it ought to be. What if? What if that's the case? What if your spiritual life, a mature, growing, intimate relationship with Christ could not exist outside of some sort of a daily practice that brings you into um, this intimate fellowship, relationship, quiet time, devotional time with Jesus. What, what if the two are inseparable? What if it was like breathing, spiritually speaking? Now, I don't want to exaggerate. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to overstate it. But at the same time, I think we need to get this. I think this is so important that we really need to get it, that I need to get it. When Jesus says one thing is necessary, what he is saying, unless I completely misread this passage, what he is saying is that the most important thing as, follow, as far as following Jesus is for you to spend time at his feet, just being present with him. So what if it's like breathing? What if it's like eating? We all find time to do the things that are absolutely essential to life. We eat, we sleep. We take care of our physical needs. We do what we have to do, right? We find time. I think, I know I've been guilty of this, maybe you have as well, that sometimes I don't give it the proper place that it deserves, and therefore I find reasons not to do it or to put it off. Yeah, I've got, I mean, I've, I've been guilty of this so many times. Like, you know, uh, like I've got so many things to do today. I've got this to-do list as a mile long, and I will get to my quiet time later, you know, but I got to get this done first. I got to get this done. And then so often what happens is you get to the end of the you get late afternoon or end of the day and you're tired, exhausted, whatever. And you say, well, I'll do better tomorrow. I don't know. 
One thing is necessary, Jesus says. What if it's like breathing spiritually for you to find time to spend at the feet of Jesus? What if that's the case? You know, in Mark 135, it says Jesus got up early in the morning and went away to a deserted place to pray. It seems as if Jesus thought this for him was crucial. And so I wonder if the same might be true for you and me, even more true, you know, for you and me. Uh, I think it was Dallas Willard who was once asked, how would you describe Jesus with one word? And he thought for a second and he said, relaxed. That's the word, the one word that he chose to describe Jesus. Maybe his demeanor, maybe it's I don't know, just uh, what, what you would have been impressed by. I wonder, I don't know, I've, I've, I thought about that for the last couple of years, relax. Maybe we might use the word, he's pretty chill. You know, Jesus was chill. In other words, he didn't get stressed out. He, he, didn't, he didn't blow things out of proportion. He was never in a hurry. He wasn't like going this frenetic, frantic pace in his life. Jesus was chill. And you find that sometimes exasperated the people around him, his disciples, you know, don't bother Jesus with, don't bother Jesus with these kids, you know, get, get them, get these kids away from him. And Jesus was like, what? He, you know, he got frustrated with his own disciples. Like, don't, don't you dare keep these parents from bringing their kids to me. I got time for them. And he would put them in his lap. And you can almost imagine the, the disciples thinking he's way too important for these kids, you know, get them, get them, get them away from here. Uh, Jesus was relaxed because he, I think maybe it was because he, he knew how to order his life. He knew what was important. He knew ultimately that things would be okay. And he spent time with the Father having a relationship. So I just encourage you this week to do this, to, to, to make it a goal for you personally uh, to carve out time to make this happen. And if you do this over time, I'm not saying it's going to make you some sort of super Christian. Only that over time, God will use this to bless you. But it's like eating. It's like doing things that are good for your body, like exercising. You start exercising. You can't tell the difference tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But over a period of months and years, you notice what's happening in your life and your, in your physical body. And the same thing is true spiritually. Here's another practical thing you can do. Is And we've talked about this a lot lately. Uh, I hope you understand the importance of this for all of us, is to disconnect for a period of time every day. Um, turn your phone off, turn the TV off, whatever your whatever your uh, media of choice is, get rid of it for a little while. Uh, your phone, your tablet, your TV, uh, whatever it is, just disconnect. The world will go on without you for a little while. Um, social media will be okay. Uh, if somebody calls you during that hour, uh, it, it, everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. Um, and, and so just just to realize the importance of, 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 of getting away from these distractions. So I hope maybe this will be helpful to you this week as you go about trying to live this in a practical way, what Jesus teaches Mary and Martha, what he teaches us. Uh, eating with Jesus, what did we learn? Well, one thing we learn is, man, this is important. This is, this is the one thing. And I think we, uh, we'd have a hard time overstating the significance of the teaching of Jesus here. Thanks so much for joining me for this short devotional. I want to pray for us, and then we'll have some songs for us to listen and sing together. Okay, let's pray. Lord, you've been so good to us. We thank you. Uh, we, we live so often, we live these frantic lives, these frenetic paces, and unsustainable, Lord, and we, we're sorry. We confess we get caught up in pressures of the world and expectations to perform and to produce. And, and uh, sometimes we're like, we're like Martha in this respect. We, we think that we just got to stay busy all the time. And we, we pray that you help us to be more like Jesus, truly to practice being unhurried and, and uh, non-anxious and to, be, to spend time at your feet. Lord, uh, help us to carve out those windows of time uh, this week to disconnect just to spend time with you, just to be present with you, not trying to do anything, not trying to uh, produce anything for you or do some sort of work for you, but just to be present with you, just to spend time with you, Lord, getting to know you, love you more, and for your spirit to work in our hearts to do what you want to do, to correct us, to challenge us, to conform us, to uh, comfort us, to give us contentment, uh, just to, to 
just to give us some clarity on all these voices that are going on in our world right now and in our own in our own heads. We love you, Lord. Bless us this week. Help us to uh, just uh, draw us closer to you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even averted their gaze from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word, but chose to be silent, though you did no wrong, nor was the sea
One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. Arise, 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 arise. Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing. Lord, come and change our lives.